What is going on, guys? Welcome to Gregos TV Daily Rewind. This is where we go back a week and give you all of the news from the past seven days in one single tech video. I am recording this on my Galaxy S22 Ultra because this phone launched this week. We go all through the drama of people receiving their phones and not receiving their phones and all of that. We talk about the first update that has started rolling out for the Galaxy S22 series of phones. We talk about and look at the Pixel 7 phone and so much more. So enjoy this tech week and we'll see you in the next one. By the way, I'm using a portrait video on this. So I should blur the background a little bit and it's very, very low light in front of me. So it'd be kind of interesting how this looks. And I'm using the front camera. First story of the day. I've been talking about this for a while and it's all about folding and flipping phones. This, this, this is the future of smartphones. Like it, leave it or hate it. It's where the growth is coming. It's where the growth is going. And this chart shows it. This is coming from Ross Young. And he is big into this field of tracking this information. And he's saying that the 2021 foldable smartphone shipments came in at 8 million, which doesn't sound too impressive, but it's 254% year over year growth. The biggest reason for the increase was the outperformance of the Z Flip 3, which sold 14% better than the expected quarter four on strong demand, especially in Europe where shipments rose over 30% quarter over quarter. And you look at the graph down below, just look, it's literally doubling, if not more than doubling every single year from the onset of 2020 to 2021 to 2022. And it's gonna continue to do that because these foldables and flips are gonna get less expensive, more prevalent, better, and just more interesting overall. So again, I'm saying within the next five years, most people are going to buy folding or flipping phones. That's my guess on this. Not everybody, most people, and the people that won't are gonna be like, I feel like you're gonna be the ones that still, this is gonna be the equivalent, that kind of buy a phone that, you know, has an actual, you know, it have, has buttons on there. That's gonna be the equivalent. It's gonna be like, oh, you still have a, a regular candy bar phone? Oh, I have a flip phone or a folding phone or some sort. That's gonna be the big difference, so watch. Next up, if you're interested in raw photos, which are uncompressed photos, this is the update cycle. X Universe is uh, leaking this out for Samsung phones. If you have an S22 Ultra, 22 Plus, or 22, an update will come in February to be able to take raw photos. Early March for the S21 Ultra, Z Fold 3 will get it in April, and then the first half of 2022 for the S20 Ultra. Note 20 Ultra and the Z Fold 2. Again, uncompressed photos, so your photos will look Pretty freaking awesome. This is a really cool update that's coming out. Next up, if you're like me, Goodlock is coming out with a big update, supposedly tomorrow. And that's per the people over in the Samsung forums that work for Samsung. And it's gonna be a pretty big update. I'm gonna run through this. Now, I do wanna let you know that in the update, it's translated from Korean to English. So if something doesn't read right, or I say something, or I re in terms of like the word, it might be different the way it's translated. But with that said, let's check out this huge update that's coming tomorrow. So there's literally tons of things in here. So if you're a fan of Good Luck, I think you're gonna like this new 2022 update that's coming out. So 2022's Good Luck, or Good Rock Goods 2022, Good Luck, Raw goods in small steps, it's not a lot, but we're preparing to give it a lot more people than last year through a separate notice. Uh, a bug that requires a device SW update other than good luck, we would like to be able to update the good luck module if possible. There are modifications that require a terminal SW upgrade. So basically going into the nitty gritty of upgrading some of the stuff, they're gonna make it seemingly easier. They're gonna add good rock cheering menu as he said before, good lock is not a project that is included in the terminal as an original function, meaning it's not built into the software per se. You have to download it outside it, but rather the development and ideation of the spare time is greatly affected by the voluntary will of the developers. Uh, image supply for decorating has gotten a new update in there. So you can be able to decorate a little bit more. You can create your own stickers. So you can do that in the kids cafe, which will be cool. Nice shot, we're bringing back some small tweaks needed for the screen capture and screen recording features. Screenshot provides settings such as enabling the delete button immediately upon screen capture and not having to clip, not having to save it to the clipboard. Screen recording, you can set various backgrounds for self video recording. So that'll be kind of cool when you're video, self video recording, you can set a background to that. 
New clock faces, this is a synergy function for the Galaxy Watch 4 users. You can use the watch you like on your phone as well. Wonderland, you can enjoy 3D effect by setting the wallpaper portrait mode taken with the Galaxy as the wallpaper. This is a sample I made. He shows a sample on there. One Hand Operation Plus has been updated with keyboard shortcuts and you can move the screen. Sound Assistant is adding some interesting sound effects such as a voice mask where you can set the effect of the changing voice in apps that use a microphone such as games and camcording. That'll be fun to mask your voice. Create your own volume panel and decks. You can also customize your own volume panel. Multistar, the Z Flip 3 device is equipped with cover screen launcher for operating various apps, so they added that in. Home Up added an option to write the app list uh, screen in vertical format. Navista, which I think is a typo or something. I see that, I don't know what, you, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Maybe that's Navistar, it's probably Navistar. Uh, Rockstar decoration function of the editing function has been strengthened. So a bunch of new things and, and updates coming to the Goodlock software, so uh, make sure you check tomorrow. I'll probably do a video on this, uh, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And then next what I wanted to talk about is, is something obviously you guys know it's happened, is people are actually receiving their Galaxy S22 phones and Galaxy Tab S8 tablets, and I'm starting to get some photos and things from you guys, so congratulations to everybody that received it, but this is definitely a huge day for everybody, and I think a lot of people like myself are getting it tomorrow. And then earlier in the day, I actually got an email saying they tried to deliver it, which is BS. They never came to my house. They said the business was closed, which I think they're just delaying it because it was supposed to deliver tomorrow anyway, so I wasn't expecting it today, but it's crazy. People are getting the phone. First story, I don't talk about the PlayStation or the Xbox or video games in general a lot, but I'm into VR and I'm into PlayStation. I'm into Xbox. I am into video games. I just don't talk about them much. Here's a first look at the PlayStation VR headset, the second generation that will be compatible with the PlayStation 5. And we still don't have an actual full release date for this, but Here's the design of it. It's gonna have one cable instead of having multiple cables. The controllers will be wireless. They look really like the ones from Meta. But I, you know what? At least the controllers do anyway. I'm totally digging all of this stuff. I cannot wait to try this. It's supposed to be 4K resolution, 120 hertz. OLED displays in there. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. I cannot wait. I'm just curious price-wise what it's going to be as well. If I had to guess, I'm guessing it's gonna be 399 bucks. I don't think they'll make it more than any of the PlayStation 5s. That'd be kind of weird, but you never know. Maybe it'd be 299 or 399, but I, I, I'm locking down 399. What are your guesses? Before we jump into the next story, you might ask where's my Galaxy Tab S8 and my Galaxy S22. It's kind of early still here. I haven't received my delivery yet and I have to make sure I'm home because I know I have to sign for those. So I still don't have mine, but with that said, let's just jump into the next story. Having to do with One UI 4.1. Some of you have been asking me, hey, Greg, when are we gonna see One UI 4.1 on the Galaxy S21 series, especially the S21 Ultra? Well, it looks like it's coming very, very soon, as soon as the end of February. And as you can see from the headline, it's a Verizon rep that's saying that the S21 One UI 4.1 update will be coming by the end of February and then hitting other countries and places maybe in March or mid-March at that. But ultimately what you're looking to get here, uh, some of the features anyway are the ability to use all the rear camera lenses in pro mode, having the ability to use the ultra wide and night mode in apps such as Instagram and Snapchat, and also the ability to customize how much virtual RAM you want to all the way up to eight gigs of RAM and other things as well. So kind of a nice little update that should be coming uh, to put your phone more in line with the S22s because those already have 4.1. And then the last story is it's kind of like, you know, I don't have my phone yet, so I can't give you like my first impressions or a review or whatever you want just yet. But I, I, The Verge put out a review already for the phone and I haven't read the full thing, but I looked at the pros and the cons and I thought about it and I want to ask you guys, it's not really a question, it is a question, but it's also a discussion of sorts to say like, is this enough? These pros, are these enough to make you not only want to upgrade and go maybe go over to the Samsung side, but is it enough of an upgrade just to say, yeah, this phone is a success over its predecessor? So let's just check out what they said for their pros and their cons as well. So for the good stuff, they said that it has snappy overall performance. They said that the built-in S Pen is versatile and has a unique offering. 
excellent cameras and improved portrait mode. And then they said the bad stuff is lackluster battery performance. Stylus features can take a while to master and night selfie portraits don't look great. And I think when we talk about the good stuff, really they're mentioning the cameras, they're mentioning the performance, and they're mentioning uh, the S Pen as well. And I, I think those probably are the main things, especially the camera and the S Pen. Like, are those enough to just make you upgrade from whatever phone you're on to that phone? I think in a lot of ways, yes, it is. Performance has always been really, really good, especially in the last few years with Samsung phones and really any phone for that matter that's a flagship phone. So that's not really a surprise. And then the bad stuff that they mentioned is kind of weird, like it's, I, which I kind of agree. Sometimes it is hard for someone new or even anybody to find some of those features with the S Pen that might be quote unquote advanced or slightly advanced features. And then they also mentioned uh, battery performance. I've heard that in the air because I haven't really watched that many videos about this phone of people saying that the battery performance hasn't been that great, which is a little bit of a letdown. And it remains to be seen, can they fix that with updates, um, which they probably could, uh, hopefully they can, and go from something that is lackluster to something that's been in the S21 Ultra as something that's really, really good. And I think that would be weird if we went from that phone to this phone, and even though they have slightly different processors in terms of generational processors, why would it be so much worse? Because they're basically the same phones, more or less, except for the S Pen being in there. But that remains to be seen. Is this enough of an upgrade with these you know, good things and bad things? Let me know in the comments down below. With that said, let's jump into the Q&A portion of the video and drop that beam. Dave says, hey Greg, if the Z Flip 4 has the same 3300 milliamp battery, do you think the new chip will help battery life? No, I don't think it will help battery life. I think you're gonna run into similar battery woes, but I don't see them, I don't know. You would think they'd wanna put something bigger in there to get better battery life for people, but I think they wanna keep these things light and small and I don't think they're gonna do much for it. Billy Richard says, did your Tab S8 Ultra keyboard cover get delayed? I just noticed on my order that mine is delayed until March 18th. No, I haven't noticed mine's delayed. It seems like it's uh, shipped with it based off of my order from Samsung. Silent Runner speaks, what are your thoughts on rocking S22 Ultra without a case? Am I crazy as Victus Plus good enough? I mean, if you're really gentle and you don't bring your phone anywhere, sure. I would definitely put a pop socket or something on the back so that you can grip it better. And if it, and if it does fall, it's potential that the, the phone grip of some sort would kind of elevate it off the backs in case it fell. You're living dangerously, son, but uh, I, some people do. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't do it. I don't trust myself. Janet Wilson, have you heard anything definitive about the display issue that seem, some seem to be having on the Ultra with a supposed pixelated vertical line? Apparently it's limited to Exynos models. Any insight? I haven't really heard anything about that, to be honest with you. Uh, most of the people, I, I do a lot of my news gathering on Twitter these days. It seems to be the, the place to be to get any kind of information. I really haven't heard anybody complaining about it or talking about it, so not really. Tisha Brown, what is Kids Cafe? How do you download it? Um, if you're talking about the Samsung thing, for like the kids, I did a video on that. If you just go onto my channel, go to my videos in the top right, there's a magnifying glass. Just search Samsung Kids, you'll see my latest video for it. Ayana Moonchild, you had mentioned in a previous video of the Fold 4 having an S Pen that inserts into it possibly. My Note 9 won't be paid off yet for a few more months, so I'm wondering if after it will finally be done, should I go for the S22 Ultra or try for the Fold 4, or will it be cheaper at launch than it was the 3 was? Well, okay, so the Fold 4, I do expect it to drop in price. I expect it to be at least $100 cheaper, $16.99, if not $14 to $15.99, somewhere in that price range. I, I, I would, I'm gonna guess $1,500 is what it's gonna come out at. Um, and then to answer your question, should you get the S22 Ultra or the Fold 4? I always say, if you haven't tried a folding phone, give it an opportunity and try it. But then at that point, you're really coming into, should you just wait for the S23 Ultra? Because the Z Fold 4 will come out in August or September. And then if you just wait like literally four, four or five months, you can end up just getting the S23 Ultra. So it's a tough one. But ultimately I would say, give yourself a chance and probably try to go for the Fold 4. I think it's an interesting phone enough that you'd probably want to give it a try. And the last question comes from Sachin Achara. Says, best wishes, Greg, way for 100K. Thank you so much. Please give away S22 Ultra to me. Questions, rumors having S Pen and almost similar display design and less battery. How concerned 
are you? Or, or will we see bigger battery on the Z Fold 4? I really wish S22 Ultra lens for the Fold 4 because it's last year. They're gonna use 108 megapixel, improved to 10 megapixel to all the photo. It's time Fold going ultra. Samsung should just use most of their premium flagship blessing for the days. I It kind of goes back to what I've been saying about this phone. I, they want to get the price lower, so I really still think we're going to see the S22 slash S22 Plus cameras in it, which will be a jump from what we've had in the past. The under display camera is supposed to be improved on the Z Fold 4 as well, which definitely is much needed. And then beyond that, it's like they're going to keep this price low. They want to keep it low, so they're not going to put the best of the best of the best in this because it is a different manufacturing for it and also they don't sell as many of this device as they do their other phones such as the S22 line of phones so they can keep those phones a little bit cheaper and then the manufacturing costs just continue to stay like slightly higher than anything else because the more you make the less it costs and they're just not at that point with the folding phones so there you guys go that is your questions for today thank you so much if you have a question leave it in the comments down below with the word question if you're not subscribed do it guys we're almost at 100,000. oh my god cannot believe i'm so excited for that and then uh, we still have our giveaway going on till February 28th. That's linked down below. You can win an S22 Ultra or three or a total of four phones are being given away at this point. And then once I hit 100,000, I'll do another giveaway as well. So there you guys go. Have a great day. We'll see you down the road. Peace. What is going on, guys? Welcome to Greg Ellis TV Daily, your source for daily tech news. Make sure you subscribe so you know what's going on in the world of tech. Guys, thank you so much. We hit 100,000 subscribers yesterday, and I'm completely blown away by your support, generosity for watching my stuff and supporting my channel. It was absolutely amazing, uh, totally emotional in a lot of ways, and uh, just a cool uh, milestone to reach. So thank you, thank you so much. I did a live show yesterday. It's on the channel. You can watch it, answer a bunch of your questions, and, and thanked a lot of you guys as well. So uh, if you subscribe, you support the channel, Thank you so much. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe. Let's get to a million. We're only 900,000 away. <laughs> With that said though, guys, we had a great day yesterday. Not only did I hit the milestone, but I also got my Galaxy S22 Ultra in green. I've already done a video on this with the first 30 tips and tricks to do. Check that video out tomorrow. Um, I haven't decided I might do a tips and tricks video on the tablet, which I have right here. <laughs> this monstrosity. When you hold it this way, it looks a lot bigger. Let me, uh, there you go. Here's my tablet. Ah. Anyways, um, keyboard cover sucks. I'll talk about that later though. So with that said, we have a bunch of news stories and we have a bunch of questions. So let's just dive into the tech news. First, the first story is about the Pixel 7. Pixel 6 came out months ago and we're already gonna see what the Pixel 7 is going to look like. And if you want it to change a lot, not really going to. So here's what it's going to look like. This information's coming from uh, XLeaks and XLeaks is showing this stuff off and you can see what it looks like based off of, it also looks very similar. The camera module is a little bit different than last year's, but ultimately it looks very, very similar to the current generations that we have now. And then some other little tidbits about the device overall is compared to the Pixel 6, it looks like the next gen Pixel 7 will be a little bit more compact as you can see from the dimensions down below, which I guess is a good thing if you want it to get a little bit smaller. And then also the other details that you can uh, gather from this is that it'll have a punch hole display, meaning that it'll have that camera hole at the top. It'll have the similar bezels to the Pixel 6, which could be good, could be bad in case you want something modern or less modern looking. In-screen fingerprint sensor, which I'm not a huge fan of, and MM Wave support, which is for 5G. Now we won't even see the Pixel 7 until probably like October, so you're still months and months away from seeing this, like what, 10 months away from actually having the phone in hand. But it's a good idea just to see what's gonna go on with it. We'll hear more about the specs and all that stuff as well. And remember, the Pixel foldable phone potentially will be released in that same month. Next up has to do with this phone, the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Now I have the Snapdragon version and a lot of you guys do as well, but if you have the one with the Exynos version, there's a potential screen issue going on and I know some of you have asked me about it and know about this already. And this is, you know, if you're curious what it's all about, this is a tweet from Golden Retriever it says, if you have an Exynos S22 Ultra, please check it if your device is defected, affected by this bug. Notice the graphic 
glitches or artifacts on the lock screen clock. Seems to be widespread issue reproduce steps in comments. And he ends up showing this little video here of it kind of glitching out. And what it all comes down to is this. The issue only occurs when the device is set to the QHD plus resolution and you have the natural color mode set. But if you set the screen to vivid, the lines disappear. It's kind of a weird, it's like a bug. So that's basically what it is because Samsung has acknowledged the S22 Ultra's screen flickering bug and a fix is coming soon. It's only a software issue seemingly. So you should, once they push that update out, you shouldn't have that issue with your phone. And again, it doesn't seem to be affecting folks with the S22 Ultra, only the folks that have the Exynos processor. So if you have this bug, let us know in the comments down below, but hopefully we'll get they'll get a, an update pushed out to you really, really soon. Yesterday we talked about the Pixel 7 and what it's gonna look like. We got some like CAD renders is what they would call them, like 3D CAD renders. But now we have some fully fleshed out design of what it's going to look like. So let's check this out. Again, this is coming from the same guy over from Twitter land known as Steve McFly, also known as OnLeaks, and he fleshed out this design and you're getting a lot of the same design elements from the last Pixel phone. Uh, Pixel 7 obviously will have a better processor, probably updated cameras, software. You know, it's gonna be more of a rev uh, revision more than a revolution. And I think a lot of people will probably be fine with that. I know I'm pretty much fine with that. Uh, I'm a folding fan, but ultimately if I was a candy bar far, candy bar far, far, candy bar fan, you know, this would be absolutely fine with me. And uh, the buttons are still gonna be on the right side, the camera cutout across the top is gonna to be very similar. Um, you know, it's just an overall solid design, just more of a revision, more than a revolution, and I think that's okay. But Pixel 7 should be out in October of 2022, so still a ways to go, but we're already seeing what it's gonna look like, which is pretty impressive. A lot of you folks asked me about eSIM support, especially on the Samsung Galaxy side. Well, we do have a little bit of information on that, especially if you are interested in eSIM, and it's coming from uh, Sam Mobile, who's saying that the Samsung Galaxy S22 series is going to get Google Fi eSIM support in a future update. So you're gonna be have to have two things. Not only will you have to have the update pushed to your phone to be able to allow for eSIM, but then you'll also have to have the carrier allow for it. So Google Fi, uh, what they do is they're not their, they're, they are their own carrier, but basically they use T-Mobile, Sprint, and uh, I forget, they use a couple other or another uh, service as well. But basically they piggyback off these other ones and then they combine them all so that you have one big massive network, network across different networks. And what's great about it is that the prices are generally pretty good and you're getting good speeds and good functionality and stuff like that. But yeah, eSIM, if you didn't know, it's electronic SIM cards. So you don't put a physical SIM card into the phone. You, uh, what, the way you set it up is you go into the phone settings and you get the electronic SIM card number from your phone and put that onto the website for the carrier and then it just all connects. It's a slightly easier way uh, for, to handle things. It's just not available across everywhere with all phones and stuff like that. But next up also about the Galaxy S22 series of phones. We got this phone, or at least a lot of us got it a few days ago, and we still don't have an update. Well, you might where you live, but it looks like a new update is rolling out. It will give it the February security update, and it's rolling out right now, and currently it's rolling out in Afghanistan and Egypt, and it's gonna be ending in AVB3. I'm on AVA or something like that, AVA6 I think it is, but AVA B3 will be rolling out. I assume it's probably gonna come out on Friday, which is the actual release date of the phone. So come Friday, expect that the actual full software release will come out to you. I not only expect it to be not only just the February security update, but also bugs and fixes in terms of, you know, it's probably gonna be a fairly large update. I would guess a gig, if I had to guess, and along with it, it would probably fix some camera features and maybe add a feature or two. Um, it should be a pretty good update. I don't think it's just gonna be a security update. It's gonna add uh, and fix things that potentially are wrong with the phone, which is always good, and expect it this coming Friday. It's the update. We talked about the update rolling out yesterday and we have some more details about the update for the Galaxy S22 series of phones. I checked my phone, I still don't have it here in America. I do expect it to roll out today or tomorrow. It should be fairly soon because usually 
because today is the official release date of the Samsung phones. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, and then, so I guess let's just roll through it and talk about the update. So Max Chamber said Samsung has just started rolling out the update for the S22 Ultra. I assume it's for the other S22s as well, but however, this might not solve the performance issues just yet. He said it definitely fixes the pixel <clears throat> issue some users are facing on their display. So that that issue where people's, you know, had some pixelization on their displays on the Exynos side, uh, that was happening. And when we look at the update, you can see an overall stability of functions improved and app update information, the apps below may be updated to the latest version after the software update. So it looks like the update allows for more updates to come to these apps is what it sounds like to me. Uh, it is a big update, it's 811 megs. So it's gonna fix probably a lot of things and holes and things like that and it brings you up to the March security update. We're not even in March, that's great news as well. I did read one of the comments on here uh, from somebody who said that they have the update, uh, but they're still facing performance issues. He hopefully that gets addressed soon. So I guess what the takeaway from it is, we know some information, we just don't know a ton of information. And then to add on to that, Ice Universe put out a tweet talking about, I don't know if it's, he's putting VBH and on Max Jamber that the update ends in VBF. So I don't know if they're different updates or the same, but ultimately he says the VBH version of the S22 series update is more stable and smoother than the VA version update and has better heat control as well for the people who received that update. So it's kind of a mixed bag. Some people are saying it doesn't improve performance. Some people are saying it do, it does. I personally haven't noticed any performance issues on the Snapdragon side really but I think Exynos is the one really feeling the burn here. So if you're on the Exynos, you can look forward to getting this update. It sounds like it's already rolling out in Europe and then it should hit America very, very soon. I also wanted to mention here that the Galaxy S22, obviously the pre-order is over, so they've removed the free pre-order gifts, but they do give you $100, $100 in Google Play promotional balance and up to 850 in enhanced trading credit. So they've bumped up the trade-ins of at least some of the phones. So if you didn't really care about the trading, uh, the trading gifts or the, the pre-order gifts, I should say, you can get better trading deals. You can get so if you have an S21 Ultra, you can get 850 bucks for that, and that will help reduce the cost of the phone, which I think a lot more people would rather have than the pre-order gifts. So if you, I'll link it down below if you want to take advantage of the deal right now with Samsung. Quick story of the day is if you know or didn't know about the Galaxy S22 phones, they don't have a screen protector this time. Usually they have a little film screen protector. Uh, this year they don't. And you might be wondering, why don't they? Or should I get one? And uh, to answer that, I don't personally think you need one. If you feel more comfortable getting one, get a film one if you're not worried about cracking the screen. Those are like you know, 10 bucks. Or if you want a glass one, look on Amazon. I know some everyone's got a different opinion. Uh, whatever, whatever you want to get. You can read the comments down below. Uh, Whitestone makes some. I did a video on unboxing of that. But regardless, why isn't there one on this this year? This is coming from Do Hyun Kim who says, here's the real reason why the S22 series isn't shipped with a screen protector. He goes on to say, Samsung has officially clarified that they are not shipping the S22 series with a screen protector because the durability of it is already enough with stronger aluminum, armor aluminum, and Corning Gorilla Glass Victus Plus. However, he thinks it's wrong. He thinks there's a conspiracy behind it. And basically he goes into depth saying that Samsung had an issue regarding the patent of the screen protector technology and inspection of state administration. They were suspected that they stole a screen protector applying technology roller kit from D company and gave it to J company for production. Now that is hypothesizing what might've happened, but the official reason coming from Samsung at the end of the day is that you know the phone is more durable it's stronger it's not needed anymore he's going into his own thing why he thinks it's a, it, the real reason behind it but who knows with the if it's samsung's telling the truth or not but still it's all hypotheses of what there's of what he's saying and uh so interesting to see that samsung saying you know it's stronger you don't need it and for me again i don't even think those things are needed at this point it's i don't i know people still break their screens but if as long as you have a really good case on there you should be pretty good with protecting it. Next is if you're having bad battery life and or performance issues as well with your Galaxy S22. We have a little hack 
to do. Very simple, it's not gonna erase anything. And I got this idea from a Reddit post and I read the comments. A lot of people are praising this act and it's very, very simple to do. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. So what you're gonna do is grab your Galaxy S22 and you can do this with any Samsung phone, not just this. Turn your phone off completely, press the power button, power it off, not restart completely power it off. Make sure there's nothing on the screen. It should vibrate when it's off. I can tell my phone's off. Next thing you wanna do, don't press the buttons yet. One finger on the power, one on the volume up. And you wanna press and hold those until you see the Samsung logo and continue holding them. Once that goes away, immediately let go. And one, two, three, you'll see. I'm gonna let go now. Did I do it? Okay, cool, I did it. <laughs> and I dropped my phone and caught it. So you have to do it real quick because what happens is you get to this recovery menu and this isn't like some brand new thing again to Galaxy phones. This is an old little trick and a lot of people probably probably still don't do it. But, but regardless, you're gonna see a menu on here of different things to do. And one of them says to wipe the partition cache. When you wipe that partition cache, it basically doesn't delete your phone, it just wipes out the cache stuff, stuff that's not really needed anymore. It basically cleans your, your phone up. Think about it cleaning your arteries out, like cleaning the arteries out, you know? It's not, it's not a, a complete fix for everything in your life. It's not gonna make you skinny, but it's just gonna clear some stuff out, and that's basically what this does. And the way you navigate is, use the volume keys up and down to go up and down. And when you're on wipe cache partition, I've been saying it wrong, wipe cache partition, you select the power button. Once you hit the power button once, it's gonna do a real quick thing and then navigate up again after it's done that and you're going to choose reboot. Once you choose reboot, it'll just go back into your phone as normal as could be. And again, I'm hearing rave reviews about it. It gives better battery life. The performance has been better and that's really what it is. So if you're having issues like that, do this. Even if you're not, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's literally just getting rid of temporary files. It's really all it's pretty much doing at the end of the day. So it's a little trick you guys can try if you're unimpressed with the battery life and or the performance of the Galaxy S22 series of phones. Uh, we don't really have a lot of news today, but we do have some food for thought. So it should be a fun little question uh, that you guys can interact with me and it's uh, coming from a tweet from Ice Universe. And then we have a handful of questions as well. So let's just dive into the tech news first. Our first and only story of the day is about this phone, the Galaxy S22 Ultra. And a tweet that Ice Universe put out saying that if something got smaller on this, then it would sell a lot more. And we'll talk about it after the tweet, but here's a tweet first. His tweet says, hey, if you reduce the chin of the S22 Ultra by 50%, the sales of the S22 Ultra will increase by another 50%. And they're already, these sales for the S22 series of phone are already like sky high right now. They're selling really, really well based off a mixture of this being a note replacement and having a new phone for the S line. So it all adds in together to make a big selling phone. Now what he's talking about is literally making this bottom part thinner, smaller. And he's saying, if you do that, it's gonna have big time sales. And I don't, I personally don't think so. When, when I look at these chins, I'm never like, ooh, that is ugly. I never think that. And I think I'd have to even guess 90% or more of the people feel exactly the same way. And I'd guess 80% of those people, if not more, never even thought about the chin at all. Like nothing and oh my God, you know, that, that's big, but I don't mind it at all. I don't think they think about it at all. And most people don't, they look at the phone and they see a, a, a tiny black bar, cause that's really what it is, a tiny black bar at the bottom and they don't really think much of it. They see one at the top, again, fairly small and don't think much of it. And I don't think other than, you know, the back of the phone, the way that looks, that's obviously an attractive part. The front of the phone, that's an attractive part as well. But when you're talking about the front of the phone, a lot of you time, unless you have a big thick bezel at this time, especially since we're in a modern day of phones, you don't really get bothered by it. And this is nothing to get bothered by. And it begs the question, are you guys bothered by it? Because if you are, I'm shocked. And I wanna know why, like, why are you bothered by that? Like what bothers you so much about that tiny chin? It might not be the tiniest chin in the world, but it's, at least in America, it's one of the smallest chins that you can get 
on a phone for sure. Even at the top, it's really small. So I don't know, it's just, it, I think I think he's wrong. I, don't, I disagree with him, but I'm curious what you guys think about that. Would that I'll actually, if they do make that smaller, even if you don't think it's ugly, if they did make this almost all screen and barely no bezel at all, do you think they'd sell more phones? I personally don't think they would. I think they'd sell just as many, if not more, if they kept it the same way. I don't think it would affect it one bit, but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. With that said, let's jump into the Q&A portion of the video and drop that. Shajil Sazad starts it off with, you already have the S22 Ultra and the S8 Ultra. Which device will you trade in uh, the S20 Ultra for? And also do you plan on doing side-by-side -side in de depth comparison S21 Ultra for the S21 Ultra? So uh, to answer your last question, yes, I plan on doing an in-depth S22 Ultra versus S21 Ultra. I plan on releasing that this week. As for which device am I trading my S21 Ultra in, I'm trading that in for the S22 Ultra. I didn't do a trade in at all for the S, the Tab S8 Ultra. Humza says I use Google Messages on the S21 Ultra, but it's not the themed one on the S22 Ultra. Will my messages get themed when I get my One UI 4.1? Have a great day, your videos are awesome. So you're, if, if you have a theme put on it, it should carry over to the new S22 Ultra because it's gonna be based off what that software can do. So I'm gonna say yes. Last question comes from Katz Kasem. Hey Greg, S22 Ultra, same like the S21 Ultra regarding the speed and processing. So I personally haven't sat them side by side this week. Like I said, I do plan on doing that video. When I do use the S22 Ultra, I will admit I don't notice, and I'm not holding it side by side, but I don't notice a huge difference between the two phones. So I wouldn't, I'll be, I'll be surprised if I'm like, whoa, that's a big difference, but I will do that. I'll show some side-by-side -side stuff, opening up apps, speakers, um, performance, cameras, display, all that stuff. I'll tell you guys what I think and show it side-by-side. -side. So there you guys go. Thank you so much. If you're not subscribed, become a subscriber, guys. It's free. Why not? If you'd like to support the show, we have we have Patreon subscribers. We also, you can join the channel. You'll see a, like a little join that helps support the channel in many other ways as well. Thanks so much. Have a great day and we'll see you down the road.